This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I'm not going to identify. What's going to be the charge? You want to take my phone. Sergeant, how are you? I'm getting all types of threats from this particular uh, officer here, telling me that she's going to take my phone and that I have to identify to her, which I don't because I know the Florida Penal Code on presenting ID. I haven't broken the law. I'm not committing a crime. I'm not in the commission of a crime. So she has no legal authority to arrest me for failure to ID, which is a secondary charge to the primary charge, whatever it may be. So I need you to let her know that she has to stop threatening to arrest me if I don't identify myself for her for being just a regular citizen. And also, there's a poster in there, poster seven, which allows media, free press, to come inside of government buildings. There's also a memo from the Homeland Security which provides security for them, uh, 2018 updated version and it's on the wall in there that for media purposes and for public information I have the right to go inside of the foyer all public areas and record she's threatened to trespass me I have it on video not one customer complained only the government workers only the government workers did charge whatever it may be so I need you to let her know that she has to stop threatening to arrest me if I don't identify myself for her for being just a regular citizen and also there's a poster in there Poster 7, which allows media, free press, to come inside of government buildings. There's also a memo from the Homeland Security, which provides security for them, uh, 2018 updated version. And it's on the wall in there that for media purposes and for public information, I have the right to go inside of the foyer, all public areas, and record. She's threatened to trespass me. I have it on video. Not one customer complained. Only the government workers. Only the government workers did. He said, but, but they, they say I'm not a suspect and I know I've done nothing wrong. It's okay if I talk to him. I said, no, no, you tell them you will not talk to them without immunity. I explained to him why that was true and they never, he never heard from them again. <laughs> okay, why you should never talk to the police. Let me just spell it out for you. Let me make it plain to all of you. And I'm quite said. sure there's many more to come. Big Nick South Florida accountability. Out. Plain to all of you. These are the top 10 reasons. I, I don't want to actually really lie to you. I don't really have 10. I don't have time for 10, but I've got time for eight and that'll be close enough. Number one, and this really ought to be good enough. Contrary to what you laymen instinctively and naturally suppose, it can not help. There is no way it can help you. Plenty of folks think that it can and they're always wrong. You cannot talk your way out of the- I'm quite sure there's many more to come. Big Nick South Florida accountability. Out. I've often asked other criminal defense attorneys, in all of your experience, have you ever once had a case where you looked back in hindsight and said, thank God my client talked to the police? They laugh at me. They laugh at me. They say, you've got to be kidding me. You cannot help you. You can't talk your way out of getting arrested. And contrary to what you might suppose if you never studied the rules of evidence, what you tell the police, even if it's exculpatory, cannot be used to help you at trial. Yeah, this is public property. I, yeah, it is. It is. It is, Siegel, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Ah, you can get all the calls you want, Siegel. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. You're dismissed. That's called the walk of shame, what you're doing right there. You are dismissed. What is relevant about this is that whereas 40 years ago when I was born, the question of having to deal with what is unspoken by the subjugated, what is never said to the master, Remember having to deal with this reality was a very remote, very remote possibility. It was in no one's mind. When I was growing up, I was taught in American history books that Africa had no history, and neither did I. That I was a savage. Because it's what we call hearsay. Under the rules of evidence, specifically Rule 801 D2A, if you want to look it up, uh, everything you tell the police, as the saying goes, can and will be used against you, but it cannot be used for you. It cannot help you. And that ought to be good enough reason. That ought to be reason enough to keep your mouth shut. But if you're not persuaded, let me go talk about a couple of others. Number two, obviously one of the most obvious. If your client is guilty, as many of them are, 
But even if he's not, even if he's innocent, he may well admit his guilt with no benefit in return. Wait and see if we, perhaps your client can work out some sort of an arrangement where maybe he'll make some sort of compensation to the alleged victim, or maybe he'll be able to get some sort of a discount in his sentence. And don't forget, by the way, even if, even if your client only admits things that the police already knew, you might think, well, what? I'm quite sure there's many more to come. Big Nick South Florida accountability. Out. The Innocence Project of the United States has confirmed that in more than 25% of all the cases where an innocent man was convicted and then later released from prison after he was exonerated by DNA evidence, in more than a quarter of those cases, these innocent people, people we know to be innocent, made incriminating statements, delivered outright confessions, or pled guilty. Police fed details of the crime to Mr. Lloyd, who was mentally ill. And the jury delivered it less than one hour before convicting him on the basis of this confession. There was no other substantial evidence against him. The judge said, I'd hang you if I could, but the death penalty was not available in Michigan. I was a savage. About whom the less said, the better. Who had been saved by Europe and brought to America. And of course, I believed it. I didn't have much choice. Those are the only books there were. Everyone else seemed to agree. If you walk out of Harlem, ride out of Harlem, downtown. For two decades in prison, he was released after DNA evidence proved that this man was innocent and had falsely committed, confessed to a crime that he did not commit. On the right is Earl Washington, who was released from prison just a few years ago here in Virginia after spending 18 years behind bars, for, after being committed of a rape and a murder that we now know he did not commit after having been exonerated by DNA evidence. But be this man, Mr. Washington, Tell you my name if you tell me your name. That's not how it works. You address me, you're a member of the Fort Lauderdale Police Department. Your policy is to identify yourself when you come in contact with a member of the public. What's your name and your badge number? I just thought I'd ask you. My name's Officer Seagulls. Thank you. Um, what we're going to ask of you, you're allowed to film, but we need you on the outside. No, sir. Right? No, you don't. Yeah, we do. No, I'm on the public sidewalk. You have no authority over me. So, Get back in your car, you're dismissed. Leave me alone. It's not the way it works. That's the way it's going to work you're today. Also on it's gonna to work today like that. So, no, I'm on the public sidewalk conducting a, a First Amendment activity. Not so, on the yeah, on the this is a public sidewalk, sir. Well, what you gonna do about it if I don't go across the street? You're gonna be warned of trespassing and you're gonna be arrested. Well, I'll be patient with you. No need to be patient because I'm not going across the well, street. Well, I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna ask for your name. And, um, and you're not gonna get, get it. it. You're not gonna get it. Okay. As we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied. Hey, hey, y'all, hey, pardon me one second, y'all. All y'all, uh, pardon me just uh, one second. Big Nick, uh, unmute yourself, uh, bro. We got Big Nick South Florida in the building. He's a, he's a champion. He's a champion. He's a champion. Y'all should sign up, um, subscribe to his channel. Like I was telling my girl, man, she a little younger than me. You know, like I was telling her, like, it's just something about our generation. It's like once we fall in love with something, it's over with for anything else. Man. Hey, hey, salute, bro. Uh, just so y'all know, uh, you know, when I watched that nine minute video with uh, George Floyd, you know, I started YouTube and certain mm -hmm. stuff, you know, about rights. Mm -hmm. And man, Big Nick is a reason why we all here right now on this panel right now, man. You know, Period. I just started thinking like, what can I do? What can we do? You know, and it's the fact that the image of us, first of all, we don't know our rights. And second of all, our image, you know, when they say Black Lives Matter, that's kind of what they are talking about. You know, our image, how our image is being displayed. It gives a man the right to feel like he can just knee you out like that in nine minutes in front of society. So. This is this is so important to me. And this is a lot of reflection and a lot of thought. Um, and I've been doing this now like almost three years. I've had the experience in the, in the world of talking. We got a system really good. And what that has uh, allowed me to do was do some introspection and take a look at myself and the way I feel about things. And what's blocking me from knowing and having this information that can possibly save my life. Why didn't I have that? And one thing I used to always try to let people know is that I consider myself to be the blackest man in the mirror. 
You know what I'm saying? The only thing I want white is a t-shirt. <laughs> and, I, and I had a, and I had an epiphany. And I and and you guys might not understand this until you really think about it, but it is absolutely true. I'm the blackest man in America, but before I'm a black man, I'm an American. Man. Because being right black, mm. being black in America has never gotten me anything, but being an American has gotten me everything. So mm. what that really is, once I realize that I'm an American, hands down, every right that's afforded to you mm. is afforded to me. Then I take power back because I am part of we the people. So it's okay to be black and love being black because well, I'm the blackest man in America. Yes, sir. Well, I'm an American. That means hey. in America. Hey, and Big Nick, thanks for uh, for your service too, bro. I mean, man. Uh, but man, the stuff that I see you do, it makes me say to myself, you know, I need to educate myself. I need to educate my people because I've seen you like that video we showed tonight, Self Love. You saw how that jump out boy jumped out on him. Man. Well, we're so willing to protect the billionaires but we'll destroy our neighborhood and we're ready to march every time we feel like something happens. That's right. Hey, yeah, feel so. free to use my video as much as you want, man. And no need to read that fair use stuff. I was, I watch you. I check your show out, you know. So just know for my, I'm your brother. Appreciate it. But mine is yours on this right here. It's gonna benefit us. But mine is yours because I can't win unless you win. So let our people know the importance of understanding that we are the bosses they're yes. the servant. Man. And they're the mm-hmm. servant. And we would not de- we would not be sitting around here calling you sir when you were the servant. Right. Period. Identify yourself to me and I address you that way. And you're gonna call me sir. You're gonna answer my question. I don't have to answer your question because I'm an American and the Constitution says Americans don't have to do that. In order for you and me to devise some kind of method or strategy to offset some of the events or re- a repetition of the events that have taken place here in Los Angeles recently, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. And it is because of our effort toward getting straight to the root that people oftentimes think we are dealing in hate. We are oppressed. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. So the only way we're going to get some of this oppression and exploitation away from us or aside from us is come together against the common enemy. taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate, you should ask yourself who taught you to hate being what God made you. And I, for one, as a Muslim, believe that the white man is intelligent enough. If he were made to realize how black people really feel and how fed up we are without that old compromising sweet talk, stop sweet talking. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how, what kind of hell you've been catching and let him know that if he's not ready to clean his house up, if he's not ready to clean his house up, he shouldn't have a house. It should catch on fire and burn down. <laughs>